Lesson number three, mathematics of motion. Here are our mathematical definitions of our motion concepts. The first concept being velocity. And we define velocity as any change in position or distance divided by time. This equation is great, assuming that our object is moving at a constant velocity or constant speed. So if that is true, we can use this equation to find what that constant velocity is or the distance traveled as we're traveling at a constant velocity. If the object's accelerating, we have to use some different equations. And here's our old definition of acceleration, which is any change in velocity divided by time. You notice we have a new equation here. The distance we travel as we accelerate would be equal to 1 half acceleration times time squared. Now that comes from looking at our position time graph down here. If you look at the shape of this position time graph for accelerated motion, you see it's a curve. So we again, we said this curve represented a positive acceleration rate. Well, if you recall from math class, this shape of this curve is actually called a parabola. And the equation for a parabola is y equals ax squared. Now that's in general for the y and x axis. But if you notice here, here our y axis is position and our x axis is time. So let's put those physics terms in, in here for y and x. So our y axis again is position the x-axis is time, so we have to square it. And now this a is a constant. For us, that's the one-half the acceleration rate. So this equation is really derived from looking at our position time graph. Steps to successful problem solving. During your year in physics, you'll be challenged to solve many different problems. Here are steps that will guarantee your success. Step one, read the problem in its entirety. Step two, Reread the problem and then state the given information. You want to write down the variable and what the numerical value is of that variable. Step three, state the concepts or variables you are looking to solve for. Step four, now that we have given information here from step two and the variables we're trying to solve for in step three, we want to establish the mathematical relationship between the given information and what you are challenged to solve for. So how are those variables all related? Once you come up with that relationship, step five, we want to solve the problem mathematically using algebra and geometry. And step six, we want to state the final answer with the correct units. Now let's practice those steps to solve a problem. Back in 1988, Flojo set the world record in both 100 meter and 200 meter women's events. If Flojo accelerated from rest, to a velocity of 9 meters per second in the first 4 seconds of the race, what is her acceleration rate and how far did she run? Let's read it again for the given information. So Flojo accelerated from rest, so this means her initial velocity was zero. It then says she reached a velocity of 9 meters per second. Well let's call that her final velocity. And it said it took her four seconds to do that, so that would be the change in time. Four seconds. And they're asking what her acceleration rate is, so that would be A we're looking for, and then how far did she run, which is her change in position. So if we look at what's given, we have the initial velocity is zero, that velocity changes to nine meters per second in four seconds. Well that's just the definition of acceleration. So let's write that down. Acceleration equals change in velocity over time. And let's put what we know here. We know the final velocity is 9. It was 0. And it took her 4 seconds to get up to that velocity. 9 divided by 4 in your calculator is 2.25 and the units of acceleration meters per second squared. Now how far did she run? Well, the distance you travel as you're accelerating is equal to one half the acceleration rate times time squared. So we just found out that her acceleration rate was 2.25 meters per second squared and it took her four seconds to do that. So we're going to square four which is 16. Half of that would be eight times 2.25 and if you do that on your calculator you'll get 18 meters is the distance she ran to go from a velocity of zero to nine meters per second. 
This next part of the video is for honors physics only. The analysis of the velocity time graph will give you the most information of any of the three graphs, so let's take a closer look at it. If you recall, the velocity time graph, the slope of the velocity time graph will tell you about the acceleration rate. So if you want to calculate any accelerations, you just take the slopes. If you want to know the velocities, you would just read that right off the graph. But how do you find out the distance you traveled? Well, that's going to be the area underneath the graph will tell you about your change in position or your distance traveled. So let's take a look at this graph here where we start from an initial velocity and travel to some final velocity up here. So some initial velocity and a final velocity. Well, how do we take the area of that? Let's drop down a perpendicular line to the x-axis. So now we can see we want to take the area under this entire part of the graph. Let's break that up into two shapes. So the first shape will be this rectangle, and we can take the area of the rectangle. The other shape will be this triangle, and we can take the area of this triangle here. So let's do the area of the triangle first. So the area of a triangle is one half base times height. Here the base is time, and the height is that change in velocity. Well, let's remember our definition of acceleration for a moment which is just change in velocity over time. If we rearrange this, that means the change in velocity is just the acceleration times change in time. So let's substitute that in for delta v, so one half t, and delta v is a times t, essentially. So one half t a t is one half a t squared. So there's our first area. If we want to take the area of our rectangle now. That's just going to be a length times width. So the length, we can say maybe that's going to be the time, and the width would be really up to what our initial velocity is. So combining these two areas together, the area of the triangle plus the area of the rectangle, uh, we'll get our total distance traveled. So that's going to be equal to VIT plus one-half AT squared. So if you remember before from the previous part of the video, if the initial velocity is zero, the distance traveled is just one half at squared. But now if we have an initial velocity already, we can calculate the complete distance traveled. So here are the mathematical relationships for honors physics. The first one just being a definition of velocity, which is just distance over time. Remember this is strictly for constant velocity motion. If you're accelerating, you cannot use this relationship since your velocity is changing. So these three down here are all for accelerated motion, whether that's positive acceleration or negative acceleration. And we just have our definition of acceleration here is change of velocity over time. We just derived this change in position equals VIT plus 1 FAT squared. And there's a fourth relationship which I won't derive, and we'll just state as vf squared equals vi squared plus 2a delta x. Thank you for watching, and see you in class.